thank you very much for your time and for joining uh, our virtual fair. Uh, I made a short introduction uh, to our topic. It's corporate communications, and uh, I think you are the, the, the perfect persons to explain us um, more about this profession and about uh, your career path. We really do our best to present some personal experiences and to share uh, that kind of information because all the general <laughs> information can be found on um, some specific universities and uh, uh, that is not the point of, of this event. Uh, okay, uh, I will ask you to present yourself in some uh, short terms uh, and uh, to tell us what is so special. Uh, why are you so passionate about corp uh, corporate uh, corporation? Sorry, corporate communications. <laughs> All right. So my name is Vladimir Stilkovic. Uh, I'm uh, from Serbia. I was actually studying uh, and I come from Serbia. I was studying bachelor studies there and uh, I moved to, let's say, eight years ago. I was in the same position. Uh, choosing, let's say, different paths and uh, uh, educational career opportunities uh, abroad. And uh, I decided to, to go to Italy to, let's say, pursue the master's studies. And after finishing the master's studies, let's say the first uh, opportunity that kicked in was uh, uh, related to the corporate communication. Corporate communication is uh, truly uh, a set of different uh, activities uh, through which you are um, sending the, the different uh, messages and communicate uh, as a company to different audiences. And uh, these audiences can include both internal and uh, external uh, stakeholders. So from one side, we have, let's say, a set of stakeholders that might include uh, employees through which you are uh, communicating, let's say, uh, what the company does, the mission of the company and the different initiatives. And on the other side, you have uh, uh, external audiences that is uh, mainly about the customers, uh, investors, uh, uh, public media, journalists, and, and so on. So I tend to consider it as a, some sort of, a, let's say, a digital marketing activity uh, applied to, to the company. It just uh, the target is a little bit different. So on one side, you have uh, the employees, the internal side. On the other side, you have, uh, let's say, all the different uh, uh, partners, customers with who the company uh, communicates. And I think... Uh, one of the most important things uh, about the corporate communication is how you uh, send these uh, these messages. And as the title of this of our discussion says, it's more than words. It's more. It's about also the mm -hmm. leading the uh, sending the, the the enhancing the corporate identity of the company, uh, the brand image, working on the brand reputation. And this is not just you know writing messages and uh, copies, but it's 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 really more. It's about uh, how you foster. Uh, a unique brand identity to uh, different stakeholders and using uh, different channels that might be article, that might be uh, an intranet uh, and also social media. So it's okay. really, uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of things uh, are being applied in the corporate communication. So it's a vast uh, Thank you. area. <laughs> Thank you, Vlad. We will continue uh, explaining uh, further about um, corporate communications. And I would like to ask Mattia to present himself and to tell us uh, about his professional background. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Mattia Rappa. I am a career service advisor and, well, we manage relations with companies, basically, so corporate relations. Uh, I work in the career service department. Um, and in particular, I sort of like bridge the gap between university and the working world. So that's obviously why I've been uh, invited today and I'm happy to be here, obviously. My background is in um, it, well, international relations, but then I, sp I specialized in human resources. So talent acquisition and uh, recruitment, basically. So before coming to university, to Yulm University, I worked as a recruiter for a couple of years. And um, basically the reason why I chose Yulm University was because it had such a good focus on communication and public mm -hmm. relations, because obviously, well, it's one of the historical um, courses presented by Yulm. So corporate communication is one of the most famous in Italy. Uh, so obviously that's, that's one of our focuses. And I thought, you know, it's because it's becoming much more important nowadays, as Vladimir was just saying now, um, I wanted to obviously participate in this in this idea in working with students and working with uh, young talented professionals. So that's why I'm here now today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Um, and let's go back to um, some uh, main points of uh, your professions. Um, Vladimir, uh, Vladimir, can you please tell us um, how would you describe your typical workday? 
or actually what are your duties um, and um, what are those activities that you have to uh, do as a corporate communication professional? Uh, yeah, so in my role uh, at Higher Europe, I'm uh, working um, as a corporate communication specialist. And uh, we have, let's say, our scope is both covering the internal and external communications. So um, the corporate communication at uh, its, uh, let's say, uh, base can be defined in, in internal and uh, the external communication. So in my role, I'm covering uh, these two roles. I'm, I'm covering different hats. And uh, the day, every day is, I mean, uh, it's different. Typically, it involves a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, emails and calls and, uh, you know, trying to uh, work with different stakeholders to amplify the different campaigns uh, that, uh, that we have in, in the company, both uh, to our employees first, uh, and then secondly, to, uh, the, stake, uh, to the external stakeholders. So uh, sometimes uh, I'm involved in, uh, let's say typically I'm involved in crafting the uh, articles and blogs that are both uh, pushed to uh, our internal channels, but also external ones. Uh, um, sometimes I'm involved more in drafting the editorial calendar for the social media, for the corporate social media pages. Um, in some days, uh, depending on the activities, uh, we might have some, uh, let's say, relations with the journalists. So it's about, you know, writing the press releases and lazing with them, trying to uh, also amplify the, the brand identity and the, 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 the key messages that uh, this press release uh, says. And uh, it also involves a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, liaising with different agencies, with different uh, external stakeholders in order to, let's say, work together and to ensure that all the communication initiatives, all the projects that we have are amplified, amplified successfully uh, at the regional level, uh, the one that, uh, let's say, uh, I'm working on. And uh, it's, uh, it's really, yes, uh, about... Uh, let's say putting all these things together it's not just let's say uh amplifying uh, the the things that you want but you work with the different stakeholders so from it to hr to to marketing and you know you, you need to you need to work a lot internally in order to to gather messages and to uh let's say somehow transport them to uh employees to the internal audience and also to the external audience through uh, different channels uh, I would say that your job, actually, your uh, your activities are very dynamic, and that you, uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess you, I guess you write lots of emails yeah. and you write lots of texts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in order to 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 spread the right information, the right to to build um, the, the brand image and the brand reputation. So, uh, you, if anybody wants to um, uh, build a career in this uh, field, uh, he or she uh, has to be ready to to um, that dynamic environment, I should say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And nowadays, it's not only, let's say, just about the the messages that you that you say, but also adapting them to the different audiences. There are many channels out there, uh, so we are moving also from the textual communication to the visual communication. And uh, sometimes, you know, you need to also make sure that all these messages, all these uh, that's a key message that you want to communicate to the different st stakeholders are perceived uh, well. And uh, this is also, let's say, uh, a beauty of the corporate communication. So it's, uh, it's dynamic and it's never boring. And there are always some, you know, new things and activities that, uh, that you are amplifying to the different audiences. Yeah, sounds great. And what about uh, that, uh, let's say, gap between your academic studies and uh, your first uh, job? Um, can you remember uh, some challenges that you faced uh, was that uh, difficult to um, to find the first job and to uh, enter that uh, job market um, later on I will discuss the same with Mattia because he can sh uh, share his experience but I would like to hear you Vladimir about about this part of your career yes sure so yeah regarding I would say that um since I was, you know, uh, studying in bachelor studies, I was always being, you know, proactive and trying to search for some, you know, extracurricular activities. Uh, this is what I'm also, let's say, always giving, you know, uh, tips and I'm always uh, supporting in this whenever someone is, you know, uh, taking some extracurricular activities. So in, in the, my experience, I mean, uh, when I finished my master's studies due to the past experience that they had in social media, in uh, building the, the corporate social media pages. I, let's say, I didn't have, let's say, issues in, in finding the first internship. 
and uh, after that, I mean, uh, uh, in that first internship, I was involved, let's say, in in starting and building the, the corporate social media pages from scratch. So the experience that they had in the past helped me a lot in, uh, you know, getting a board and trying to, let's understand where, where I am. It was for sure, I mean, there was for sure challenges, but that's also the, uh, the good thing about it because uh, embracing the challenges, you also get some uh, new opportunities. And uh, that's how, let's say, I, uh, I started first from social media, but then, you know, my, my scope of work uh, uh, enlarged and right now I mean uh, before I was not knowing what internal communication is so uh, I mean the experience that I had through the social media has helped me you know uh, and enlarge my, my scope and uh, that's I, I think the, really the, the, the great thing about it. Yeah, maybe social media is a kind of a door or a window through uh, towards mm -hmm. uh, some career yeah. in corporate communication because um, it's so important channel of communication these days that uh, you have to handle that uh, written communication, that visual communication. And, and yeah. I think that, that uh, building a brand is really about uh, all those uh, components. Uh, Matia, what would you say about uh, this, um, let's say, transition between academic studies at uh, ULM and uh, IULM and then um, um, a job market. How do you support uh, your students? Absolutely. I think, first of all, what's important to say is that um, the beauty of corporate communication and public relations is that it's so, it has such a vast application as well. Like, obviously, obviously, Vladimir is a very specific case of the corporate communication in a specific company. However, while, while I was preparing, obviously, I was looking at the different sectors and the different roles that can actually be um, <clears throat> in a certain sense embarked on once you've finished university or even during university, because there's, obviously we encourage a lot at uh, Ulm University the idea of a curricular internship. So while you are still studying to engage mm -hmm. in professionalizing activities, because this will help you further on in life and when you're actually finishing your studies and moving into the working world. I think <clears throat> that's something that we really, really work on, and especially on the employability. In fact, going back to what Vladimir was saying before, the idea of working on extracurricular activities, engaging in personal projects, doing not, not just the studying, the academic side, because obviously that's important. You need to know the theory, you need to know how to apply it and everything. But if you're engaging in personal activities, I think that's hugely important as well when you're looking into moving into the working world. So. I think the idea of the, the difficulties that can be encountered, obviously this year has been particular for everyone, uh, as we all know, um, it's, but I have to admit that I've noticed a big um, increase in the, in, the, in the idea of the digital activities. So obviously digital marketing, digital communication has been exploding over the last year. So I think that could be one of the easiest ways in recent times to get into the corporate world into the corporate communication world and in fact I've noticed the number of activation of internships in this sector over the last year um, in, the, in this field more than anything has been really increasing um, however I do also think that you know as things will get better as we all hope um, obviously the, the number of different applications for the corporate communication can be huge. It can be in the event sector, it can be in uh, public relations, uh, but also in terms of like media companies. It's not just the final companies, but you can also work for agencies, communication agencies, mm -hmm. digi digital media agencies. And th they've been exploding over the last few years because uh, not only because of the advances in technology and the idea of being present on the internet, you know, for lots of lots of small companies, small medium companies as well. Um, but it's not just about the idea of content creation. You can work on like editorial planning, uh, but also the part of the sales analysis in in, in comparison with the communication because it goes hand in hand. So it really there is so many things that you can explore with this kind of degree because it, it all depends on what's your interest. And to talk about the sectors as well, um, it, it can, it can, there's, I was looking again at the number of internships we've activated for, for public relations and corporate communication students mm -hmm. over the last year and a half. I used a year and a half because of the, because of the pandemic and everything. So before 2020 as well, but it was, it was incredible to see the different sectors, fashion, uh, pharmaceutical, uh, mechanical, there's also energy, energy sector, which has been exploding as well. So it really all depends on what your interests are as well. You can explore so much. And I encourage everyone to explore before they finish university as well, because it will also help you understand what you want to do afterwards. So that's, that's just to give you a little preview of the things that obviously mm -hmm. you can do with, with this kind of degree. And I think it's important to acknowledge them that it's not one fixed, uh, 
you know, road that you can take, but you can explore different things. Um, and the other thing is, I think what what uh, what you were mentioning before was the, what do we do as a, as a, as a as a career service department in sort of to help you mm -hmm. in this sense? Well. Aside from actually maintaining relations with uh, companies both locally and internationally as well, so I'm, I also focus on uh, international opportunities, so I'm an international internship officer, so we also do try and promote experiences abroad as well, but obviously in this case it's you coming to Italy, so what I'll, talk, I'll focus on the, on the kind of the Italy side, obviously. Um, but the idea is that we try and support you at 360 degrees. So it's not just we talk to the companies, they offer us internships, and then we set, we pass them on to you and make sure you get taken for an internship. It's not just that. So it's the idea of we offer um, sort of single sessions as well. So we have one-to-one -one sessions where we offer from how to write your your CV so it's something that no one ever teaches you you know it's it seems so simple but it's so important you know how do you present yourself it's your first business card companies it's the first thing companies see of you right um but also then it's not just the CV it's how once I've landed the intern the, the, the interview how do I approach the interview you know so we help you prepare those interviews as well so it's literally one-to-one -one, like obviously now it's all it's all video and it's not one you know it's not in person that's a shame but it, you know it's still it's still a way to be uh, close to you and helping you understand like how to approach the different the different market um, interviews and different companies require different things. Um, so these are all the one to one services. Then we also have uh, business coaching and counseling. So we have counselors and coaches. Uh, business coaches and counselors, which help you in a certain way, understand what your strengths are, understand what, um, what you should be working on. So your areas of strength, but also your areas of improvement. So are you someone who likes collaborating? Are you, do you have soft, soft skills that you like to engage in? Um, but how can you also develop them? So that those are also useful services that we've developed over the years. I would say over the last three or four years, they've been particularly uh, appreciated and then we have like full-on for for, third, for bachelor students so in this case even for corporate communications we recently this year developed a, a bud hub project which was basically a self-assessment project where you have an assessment center and you understand like um, the idea of what are your what are your key soft skill strengths and how can you develop them but then it's a whole program followed in with the coaches and counselors so they're all like one ad hoc uh, courses that we we provide and everything um one last thing and then now this because because i'm working on it now uh is we also organize uh career events so basically they are events directly in in, in contact with the companies so with, we've done digital ones over the last year obviously and we're working on one now and so another way is to act actively engage in uh allowing students and gra graduates to actually meet the company companies yeah. yeah so yeah, I don't know if then there's maybe some like specific questions, but then these are as an overview of what of what we do. I mean, we try and help at 360 degrees. Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely strong support that you offer. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what what is also very important is that uh, the idea of um, uh, permanent development, both mm -hmm. personal and professional, and about Absolutely. discovering our skill, our talent, skills, possibilities, potentials, etc. And I would like to go one step uh, backwards um, before we enter uh, university and before we choose the right um, study program. Uh, what would you both, both of you, what would you say? Um, about that moment uh, of decision, uh, because many students think that it's like the, the decision of their lives that uh, they have to write mm. to choose the right thing. Otherwise, everything will be <laughs> ruined until the end of their lives. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but uh, that is something that uh, that we do here as well. That uh, professional and academic orientation, and uh, we uh, hear our uh, students uh, having big uh, doubts and uh, insecurities about uh, their possibilities. So my question is uh, uh, for Vladimir and then for Matia. Um, um, did you, what, what would you say, um, did you change a lot from that point uh, um, when you chose the, your study field and your uh, study program until, until now? Did you, how many things did you discover about yourself? Um, did you have the same passion for communication or it was developing throughout your career? 
Yeah, it's. Uh, I would say both. I would say both, uh, uh, and it's something that uh, I I think it applies also to other industries as well. Is that uh, once you, so uh, academic studies are one thing, and then once you you know enter in the career opportunities and your professional career, uh, your career might change. I mean, uh, there are many opportunities that you might embrace. Um, I would always say. I mean, uh, I'm. I'm, a, a, let's say, a risk taker. I like to, to challenge myself. Mm -hmm. And that's just something that um, I would also, let's say, um, suggest to all the people that are considering, you know, studying uh, abroad. Uh, studying abroad is going to definitely open you to, you know, new concepts, new philosophies, different ways of thinking. Uh, you will have, let's say, opportunities to work with different cultures and understand also their ways of thinking. And this is something that... Uh, you could then later on apply and it's something that is happening uh, when you're working in a multinational companies. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's something that is happening at a daily basis. So from my experience, uh, I'm definitely, let's say, uh, a different person. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I mean, uh, it's uh, something that, um, let's say, uh, it's the part of the experimentation because uh, mm -hmm. you are on, on one side, let's say, pushing the envelope and trying to test you the new ideas and to understand, you know, where you uh, going. But at the same time, I mean, uh, it might happen that you might have, let's say, different career opportunities that might uh, overcome. So uh, mm -hmm. maybe you will be in, right now, I'm in the corporate communications uh, covering the, let's say, the both internal and external communications, but uh, it might happen that I move more to the public relations or to the event management. And these are, let's say, some opportunities yeah. that might kick in uh, once you are, you know, developing your career. Yeah, and being open-minded and uh, ready for for new things, that is something that will bring us the, uh, the best um, of, our, of any experience. And Mattia, what would you say uh, about the profile of students that, uh, that apply for uh, EOM? The profiles of the people who come in to study in Yulm. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. What would you say? What is the profile, let's say, of, of uh, your future student? And what would you um, uh, search for? Looking, what are you looking for in your uh, applicants, candidates? Okay, so I think the interesting is, um, I think also just to, just to close also what Vladimir was saying before is that the mm -hmm. market is very is very fluid at the moment. So what I'm saying is, so there's lots of different opportunities. I've seen students start in corporate communications and then specialize in marketing, events, sales. So what I'm saying is it opens a lot of opportunities. It's it's a very, it's a, mm, in a sense, it's a, it's a background sort of formation training, which can then, which you can then develop as things go along. So I think that's important, something important to say, absolutely. Uh, in terms of the profiles that we, that I'm, I meet a lot of students every day. So part of my job is obviously meeting one-to-one -one students. And the things that I've noticed the most is the, is the curiosity. So having people who are curious and who want to learn about things, but most of all, people who are proactive. I think that is one of the most important things that we, we need in this in, right now in, in Yulm, but also in the working world. I think if you're someone who's waiting around for things to happen, they won't happen. You know, <laughs> nowadays, the competition is so strong um, because of the way that the market is structured, the way of the way the world, the world works at the moment, there's a lot of competition. And I think the only way is if you are curious and proactive about what you want to do for yourself. Obviously, there's, it's always good to like, you know, lift your hand and say, I need some help. That's perfect. That's not, that's, that's, that's what we're here for, you know, um, to help understand in what direction. But I think there needs to be that proactiveness and that sort of a bit of risk taking, a bit of initiative taking that you, you need in order to, um, to succeed. And I think that's what I'm, I'm looking for when I'm, when I'm talking to my students as well. So it's, it's good in that sense to be a little bit curious. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, great. Uh, well, we actually said a lot of things about um, uh, possibilities in this uh, um, field. Um, corporate communication really offers lots of uh, things and lots of um, uh, challenges. Um, but what can we say at the moment about uh, maybe some kind of uh, prediction for a uh, future uh, a couple of years? So what would you say? Uh, where should we focus? Actually, our students, um, what would they, what should they do uh, in order to adapt uh, to these circumstances? Yeah, I would say that uh, the future is bright for the corporate communications. There are many, let's say, uh, new channels that are appearing that were not present five years ago. And uh, definitely it's something that uh, we need to, let's say, consider 
Um, I would also say that um, there is a big uh, part of the corporate communication related to the analytics and to the visual, let's say, guidelines and to, to design. So sometimes I would suggest this, like uh, you need to take into consideration these two aspects because when you, you know, communicate, you also need to understand how was your communication perceived by the different audiences. So being a little bit uh, tech savvy and, you know, digital savvy mm -hmm. and understanding the, the main KPIs behind your uh, messages is important. But at the same time, as, uh, as we were speaking before, uh, the communication is moving more towards, uh, let's say, uh, design and towards, let's say, communicating to visual and using the different multimedia assets. So you need always to stay up to date with the latest trends and to understand, you know, the different uh, formats that are uh, out there. So uh, I would echo also what Matthias said. It's always about, you know, uh, being proactive and staying up to date because, I mean, uh, you need to get a, a real life experience uh, during the studies and this will help you, you know, enter in the career uh, field, in the professional field. But at the same time, during your career, you might have, let's say, new channels appearing, new tools appearing. So you always need to be, uh, let's say, to, to, to follow the latest trends and to adapt your, your communication towards this. So I would suggest this and uh, as well, um, let's say, experimenting as well. So sometimes mm -hmm. some, you know, communication might not work as, as you wish, as you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of the analytics that you have, because of the perception that uh, you have seen through these tools, you might uh, adapt it to, let's say, uh, a new channel or to, to a new format. So it's also about having fun, experimenting, having fun, being a little bit proactive and exploring different fields uh, in, the, in the field. That sounds great. And yeah, what do you just absolutely. Yeah. What I would say is that I completely agree with what you're saying. The future is bright. Uh, there's new technologies being developed. I mean, in 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 Yulm recently, um, we've been developing a lot on neuromarketing and like artificial intelligence, the importance they have on. In fact, we also have a neuromarketing and artificial intelligence lab that we've this research center in Yulm. Uh, so we've definitely been giving the idea of communication, but also like what are we communicating in a certain sense? So that's also a big big question because. Information where, you know, we've got lots of information coming at us every day, every moment, every second on our phones. Okay. But we also have to understand the quality of that communication. I think that's the next step in the evolution of communication. And this is what we're trying to do, you know, teach, teach the students as well. It's not just what you communicate, but it's how you communicate it as well. Mm -hmm. So the, the analytics and understanding that is what we're focusing on a lot. So I think that's, that's very, very, very important. Um, yeah. I think that's 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 what the future has has in store for the for what, what is communication. And uh, how does uh, Ilm University uh, support uh, their students um, in terms of internships and uh, building their future? Okay. You so said, uh, okay. Something about that, but I think we can we can finish with that the, with, with uh, that that question. Yes. Yeah, so what we uh, basically I, I'd like to expand, obviously, what I was saying. So it goes it literally does go from I will help you to write your CV, understand what you want to understand, you know, write, communicate. How do you communicate to others? OK, so it's also about adapting the communication in your CV for what your job wants to be. You know, it, it's also about how you personalize your own personal brand. So we help you in that in that sense. But then it's also, you know, organizing meetings with companies, understanding their needs and trying to obviously take that back to the university and be like, okay, so companies are asking for this in this moment. Mm -hmm. We need to work on that internally as well. We need to make sure the students know how to use Google Analytics, Google Trends for the whole analytics side, because it's something that's been, you know, it's been evolving over the last five, not even, not even 10 years, you know, five years mm -hmm. uh, it's been sort of developing in that sense. So it's all about understanding what the market wants and trying to take that back into the university and making it very practical. The thing I enjoy a lot about university in Yulm, and I think that's something about the life. I mean, I studied abroad as well compared to Italy. Mm -hmm. So I was, in, I worked in, um, I, I studied in the UK. But the thing I, um, I appreciate the most about Yulm is that it's very practical in its sense. So it's, it's, it's obviously the theoretical side is very important. Obviously, you need to know the, the concepts and the information behind. Otherwise, you know, that's the, the whole point of university. But the interesting thing about, you know, a bachelor's degree in corporate communications is they also teach you how to apply that information. I think that's something that I've realized with students. As, as I've met them, they've done lots of labs, lots of projects in collaboration with the companies. So I think that's something really important because you come out of university and if you're doing an interview and they're asking you, oh, 
have you ever structured a communication plan or an editorial plan for my social media? And they're like, yes, mm -hmm. we've done a project with, you know, and that's something that I find that has a huge, in a certain sense, a huge um, potential advantage, you know, an added value when you're actually presenting yeah. yourself on the market for a job interview and you're compared to other students who've looked more to the sort of more theoretical side. So I think that's something that's extremely important. And we try to we try to understand that need by talking to companies on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So as a part of my job is that, you know, talking to companies, understanding what they need yeah. and bringing yeah. that information back into the university. So yeah, to understand both sides and uh, absolutely and do the best. OK, thank you so much for uh, sharing your experiences and uh, you. your knowledge about corporate communication. Actually, we will have today uh, more uh, presentations that will touch some of our topics like video production, digital marketing, etc. Uh, so many, many uh, study fields and many uh, jobs are connected. Mm. Uh, thank you once again. Grazie mille, Mattia. And uh, <laughs> I hope we will share some uh, some future virtual experiences like this, or maybe uh, we will host you here in Belgrade. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.